what a blessing. And I always enjoy a good pastor's group number, and that's one of our favorites. Uh, praise God for that. Allison, our worship leader today, she's got some good announcements. This is a big month coming up. We're, we're coming up on our, our Lenten journey, so she'll fill us in a little bit more about what's uh, what's happening here. And it's, it's everything is happening early this year, so uh, lock and load, as they say, get ready for us. The end of March, that means Easter may be chilly. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to our service this morning. And do we, we do have, I know, a first-time visitor. Uh, and if there's any online, please let us know. Is there any other first-time visitors here? We have Kathy with us today. Kathy, here. okay. Yeah. Um, we would love to honor any as a first-time guest. So if you're watching for the first time online, please let us know. Amen. And God bless you all today. Our next church work day is Saturday, February 17th at 8.30 a.m. And all help is welcome. That's how we keep this church up. Amen. Uh, the next Breakfast and Blessings is slated for February 10th from 8.30 to 10 a.m. And uh, where's Carol? Yeah, see Carol. Help. Where? I need help. She needs help. Okay. <laughs> and the sign up is back on the bulletin board back here on the side in the narthex. Um, please help with this ministry. Uh, today's flowers are given by Jim Hack in memory of Joanne. This week's calling club names are Jimmy Arndt, Dolores Hawkins, and Mary Gilbert. If you would like to be added to the list, please let Char know in the church office. If you need the phone number, call Char and she'll give it to you. Our Revelation study is Wednesday, February 7th, that's this coming Wednesday at 1 p.m. in our church library. All are welcome to attend. It gets very interesting. Amen. Pastor Wendell still has study material available in the church library for any who's interested. And remember, Next Wednesday is the 14th, and that is Ash Wednesday, so we will not be meeting on that Wednesday. Amen. Let's, next, let's begin to prepare our hearts for the Lenten journey this year. Our Ash Wednesday service will be next week on February 14th at 7 p.m. Plan to join our journey to the cross with Jesus. Looking ahead, Easter Sunday is, as we said, March 31st. If you've never been a part of one of our Ash Wednesday services, uh, we will invite to be a time of reflection, to give you a chance to uh, offer up something to the Lord in sacrifice on a card, and uh, we will administer the ashes, we will observe communion, we'll sing a few songs and just kind of rejoice in the Lord. It's, it's a little bit of a shorter service than we would have on a Sunday morning. It's usually a very intimate gathering uh, on that Ash Wednesday evening. So it'll be 7 o'clock on the 14th, as Allison said. Keep in mind. And our Women's Guild will host their annual soup and salad event in two weeks on Sunday, February 18th. For the morning, uh, after the third Sunday singing service, when we all get to sing our choices, it's stumped the organist, I think. <laughs> Sign up sheet is on the side again in the narthex, back on the bulletin board. And speak with Jan Jansen about if you have any questions about it. Uh, everybody, most of them try to list what they're going to bring so we, you have an idea if you want to do something else. Uh, planning to host Gideon Bible Missionary for a missionary update on March 17th this year. Come prepare to support the ministry of spreading God's word through the world, through this ministry. Are there any announcements from the congregation? Amen. One more that I'd like to make, Alice. Uh, most, some of you know, most of you probably know, 
Usually this is the Sunday that we would have our spring uh, business meeting, and uh, we're not doing that today. Uh, we're pushing that back until Mr. Haig will be with us uh, to uh, answer all those hard questions if he's watching online. <laughs> Uh, so, but we'll be doing plan on that spring business meeting for the church for the first Sunday in April. I think it's April seventh, if I'm not, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. But so plan on that be April seventh for that spring business meeting after service. Okay. Any questions? Let me know. If that's all, then let's uh, please rise and join in the call of worship. Uh, you'll find it inside the cover of your hymnal. The Apostle. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the conscious pilot, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one and holy universal Christian church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And while we stand, let's join in him. What he ate. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. I tell you, great is God's faithfulness to us. Let's do one and three this morning.
And now, let's take some time to greet our speakers and ask them to Thursdays? Okay, that's even better. Miss Kathy always correcting me. She knows it's better. 
That's right. All right. Are you guys ready to help us collect today for breakfast and blessings? All right. Good deal. today comes from Acts 5, 1 through 11. And in uh, the paper here, it is titled, Lying to the Holy Spirit. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. And he kept back part of the proceeds his wife also being aware of it and bought, brought a certain part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing those words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. And then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look at the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young man came in and found her dead and carried her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. This is the word of the gospel from our book. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Alice, for the scripture reading. Boy, can, can you agree with me this morning to say thank you, Pastor, for that encouraging and uplifting scripture today. Two people <laughs> died in the course of reading the scripture. Um, it, uh, it's actually not funny, but it's one of those things where I chose that portion of scripture. We've been talking about things people say, things people believe. And today we're focused on the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, there's a lot of misconceptions about who the Holy Spirit is. I can still remember my girls when they were younger having a chat with each other and I was around the corner and they didn't know I was listening. Uh, ever do that, Ryan, and eat, eavesdrop on your kids? Uh, <laughs> you like, oh, watch out, girls, your dad could be listening. But I was listening to, to them, and they were talking about the Holy Spirit, and, and the, the older one was just, was just a 
couple years older. She might have been eight, the other one might have been uh, you know, four or five, something like that. They were talking about the Holy Spirit. And uh, the younger one says, oh, I know all about the Holy Spirit. And, she, and the other girl says, well, you do? She goes, yeah, he's, he's friendly. He's, he's the Holy Ghost. He's like Casper, the friendly ghost. <laughs> Of course, I smiled and, <laughs> and uh, came and hugged them both, and we talked a little bit about who the Holy Spirit was. But there's a lot of misconceptions about the Holy Spirit, so we just want to—I want to give you firsthand this particular passage of Scripture. Yeah, there's uh, there's some concerning things there. It's, it's not exactly uplifting, but we need to understand who the Holy Spirit is. And I didn't have Alice read this, but just prior to what she read there, when she said a certain man named Ananias and his wife Sapphira sold a certain possession, and they wanted to give it to the church. This was at a time in the early church when the church was starting out, and people were excited to be a part of the church. They were excited to, to give financially, they were excited to, to be a part of what God was doing in others' lives. And so... People were selling properties and stuff like that, and they were giving it to the church. And this is what happened just prior to that. A guy by the name of Barnabas, in chapter 4, that he sold a piece of property, and he gave the whole thing to the church, and uh, laid it at the disciples' feet and says, here it is, use it according to the Lord's will. Now, we're not, not asking you to do that today. We're just recounting what was going on in the New, uh, New Testament in the church in that day. Barnabas, he says, I sold it for, I'm just picking a number out of my hand. I sold this for uh, you know, $10,000. Here it is. Here it is. Now, the difference between Barnabas and what Ananias and Sapphira did, they came to the disciples and say they sold theirs for $10,000. They go, we've sold a piece of property for $5,000. Here it is. This is all of it. This is all the sale we got. We're giving it to God. Who knows the desires and the intents of our hearts? God does. God does. Where the Holy Spirit enters into that today is, we've been talking about what people say and believe about God the Father, what people say and believe about Jesus as the Son of God. And we've been talking today about who the Holy Spirit is. He's not just a mystical force. He's not some impersonal power. The Bible declares that the Holy Spirit is indeed God. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is a divine person. He's part of the Trinity as we know it. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He has the attributes of a mind, of emotions, and a will. And the fact that the Spirit is clearly seen in Scripture, we've just witnessed that by what Alice has read for us here in Acts chapter 5. When Peter confronts this gentleman, Ananias, who said, well, we sold it, uh, we, we, we sold this property and we're giving it all to the Lord. Peter's response to him. Did Peter know? Had Peter been there when, when the bill of sale was, uh, was written off? No, Peter wasn't there. But the Holy Spirit of God told Peter. One thing I learned at an early age, you can't lie to everybody. Somebody, be sure your sins will find you out, Scripture says. And I, and I sin. I mean, and the bottom line is, I've heard preachers preach this so, so many different ways. What he sold was his. What he sold was his to do with whatever he chose to do with. But what got him in trouble was that he chose to lie to God, to God's people. 
saying that I sold, I, I'm, I'm giving it all, but when he really, really, him and his wife had conspired to reserve part of it, they wanted to make themselves look good in the eyes of those that were part of that early church. And what did it cost them? Their lives. Their lives. Peter confronted Ananias and asked him why he had lied to whom? To God. To the Holy Spirit. To God. You've not lied unto men, but unto God. And Peter's equating here the Holy Spirit with God the Father. It's a clear indication that lying to the Holy Spirit is lying to God. We can know his characteristics. We can know his essence. We can know that from other places in God's word that the Holy Spirit uh, is he's omnipresent. We say God is everywhere. The Psalms tells us that, you know, God, where, where can I hide it from you? In Psalms, it talks about the Spirit of God saying, where can I hide from you, Spirit of God? That is God's Holy Spirit. He's with us everywhere. He follows us. He guides us. He wants to direct us. He's omnipresent, just like God the Father. Where can I flee from your spirit? Psalm 139, 7 and 8 says, Where can I flee from your presence, O Lord? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. You are there. And we see... 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. Not only his omnipresence, but his omniscience. Omniscience, that's just a fancy word for saying all-knowing. Any of you ever been told that you're omniscient? All-knowing? I certainly have, that's for sure. But God's Spirit is all-knowing. God's presence is he is all-knowing. He knows everything about every outcome that can and will happen in our lives. And he knows where we're at. He knows what we're going through. And he reveals things to us by his Spirit. So scripture in 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11 says, These are the things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things and even the deep things of God, for who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them. It's the same way that God knows us and searches our hearts. That really causes me to stop and think sometimes about what I'm thinking, about what I'm watching, let alone what I'm doing. God knows the desires of my heart. His spirit knows the intents of my heart. The right and the wrong. And that's the aspect of this Ananias character ran into that God knew the intents of his heart was to deceive God. The deception aspect of all this, the lying aspect, is what cost them their lives. Everybody thinks, we live in a world today that thinks that where we're not accountable to God and that they can do it and a lot of people get away with a lot of stuff every single day but you know there'll come a day Paul says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 10 there'll come a day that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord we will give an account to him for who we are and what we've done we'll confess him as Lord in this life or in the life God. My recommendation would be to do it now. To Jesus now. We've had, uh, you know, Alice mentioned the Bible study. We've been having a book of Revelation. My, what a, what a ride it has been as we have gone week after week. We're, in, we're going to be in Revelation chapter 17 this coming Wednesday before we take our Ash Wednesday break. But we're 75% away through what we're discussing. And the judgments that God is pouring out on the world, it just blows my mind because the evilness of men 
And, and still God judges him and, and he beckons them to come to him. We live in a world today where God is beckoning people to come to me. Come all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. God's desire is for me that we come to him. He's made room. We learned this verse as kids, you know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever believing that him should not perish but have everlasting, everlasting life. And it's not just a, a quality of life, an everlasting life that where you, you're living forever because you're going to live forever somewhere. It's a quality, everlasting life in that context is a quality of life with God because you choose to make him your Savior and your Lord. But he loves us today. And he beckons us to come. And his desire is that no one should perish, but that all should come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He loves you today. That's one of the attributes of the Holy Spirit. Not only is he omnipresent and omniscient, knowing all things, he draws people to God. The Spirit desires that we know God better. And I can say that it was May 2nd, 1965 when I went forward in a, a church service and I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. As an eight-year-old boy, I can unequivocally say that I know God better today than I did as an eight-year-old boy. He's brought me through things. He's, uh, he's strengthened me. He's comforted me. He's guided me. He's taught me. All of these things were through the ministry of his precious Holy Spirit. The song he sang for you last week, Through It All. I really like that one verse, you know, if I never had a problem, I'd never know that he could solve it. I'd never know what faith in God could do. Do I go around looking for problems? <laughs> Part of me. I like when things work the way they're supposed to work. I like when I open my refrigerator and the light comes on and I can feel the puff of cool air. I want it to be hot. I don't want my refrigerator to be warm on it. I want stuff to work. When I go over to flip a light switch, what do you expect when you flip the light switch? The light goes on. Yeah. You want it to come on. When I put the key in the ignition to turn it to start the car, I don't want to hear it. I want to hear it start because that's why I put the key in so it will start. All this, I like things to work because sometimes things don't. I praise God for you today. Two weeks ago in this building, no, he didn't. <laughs> Thankful for that. Thankful. But you know, if we never had a problem, we wouldn't know that God could deal with those things and help us through those things and be a blessing in every aspect of our lives. There's so, so many things about the Holy Spirit that I want to convey to you this morning. Our time will not allow us to do that. But I think what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to pause right here. We're going to pick up. I'm going to give you some more on the Holy Spirit next week. And we'll continue this study uh, into next Sunday, just prior to our Lenten journey. But the Holy Spirit is special. We can know he possesses the mind and the, the emotions and the will, the characteristics that we do as human beings, as God has conveyed in us. The spirit, he thinks, he knows, he can be grieved. He makes decisions. He functions as a comforter and a counselor to us. He's a person. The bottom line is, and we'll learn some more about him, God willing, next Sunday.
Don't lie to me. Don't say you're going to do something and don't do it. You may not have the consequences that Ananias had in the destiny. It might not, might not occur immediately. But we live in a world today where they would judge immediately. There'll be a time and a place where God will, people will stand before God and will give an account. And all debts will be paid before God. Receive his mercy and his grace today if you haven't. Confess your sins to him. Ask his forgiveness. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, faith believing, shall be saved from their sin. That's God's promise to you. It's God's promise to me. I received that promise many, many years ago. I've messed up for, for him I don't know how many times. But he's always been faithful. First song we sing, great is thy faithfulness, God. He's always faithful. Amen? Amen. Amen. Any questions on that? Or if you died yesterday, you know you'd be in heaven today, you're not sure of that. See me. I'll take God's word and I'll show you page by page, verse by verse, how you can know. Amen. All right. Page number 273, Laura. 273. I stand amazed in the presence that we very well can't sit on this one. Very well, can sit on this. 273. Stand amazed. Let's do the first and the last verse. Let's 
pray for this little one, little Naomi, on Chardonnay's. And uh, that God's healing him just reach down and touch the precious little jewel angel, uh, a little girl. Amen. Which ones do you have requests today? Yes, Bonnie? God, we thank you for the day you blessed us with. Thank you for, for Jesus. And we ask that you be with these, Lord, uh, 
Bobby's asked for prayer for Brother David and uh, the mental health issues and things he's struggling with. Ask that your healing hand will be upon him spiritually and physically. We ask that continued prayers for Jenny. Lord, that uh, you just touch her and lift her up. And God, the same for our precious Vivian. Thank you for Rich Harvick's testimony, Lord, that he uh, uh, came through his surgery okay and is, is feeling much better. And Lord, we pray for, as Jenny's asked prayer for Stevie's uh, friend Joe, who's having some mental health issues too. We pray for him and you meet him at the point of, of his need. Dave's asked a prayer for Eddie Robinson, Lord, and, and Rick McCoy, and circumstances in both of these gentlemen's lives. We pray that you physically with them. We pray for Jeremy and Murray's family, Lord, that uh, you would touch them. Ms. Robin has uh, asked for uh, prayers for her body, Lord, and the situation, Lord, in her home. We pray for uh, that as well, with Char and Rick as they're endeavoring to get uh, their issue taken care of with heat as well. Lord, we, uh, we just thank you for your blessings. We pray for our church as a family. We pray for those that are away, those that wish they could be here today but aren't. We've got several people moving. We just pray for all of these. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's people said together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 At this time, our usher is going to come. We're going to receive our morning offering. You give as you're able to as God is blessed. And for those that are watching online, there's an online giving tool that you can tap into. Register to either give by credit card, a direct debit from a, a checking account, something like that. And that is open to anybody that wants to set that up for a one-time giving or an ongoing basis if you choose to, uh, to give that way. But thank you for that. Ushers, well, go ahead.
to feed us at the point of our needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. This being the first Sunday of the month, we're accustomed to it. We're going to observe communion. We're going to observe communion. And uh, if you, uh, whether or not you're a member of St. John's uh, or not, uh, not really important. The important thing is if you are a child of God, you're a member of God's family, you've trusted Him as your Lord and Savior, we invite you. We'd be thrilled, privileged to have you observe communion with us today if you're a child of God today. So we invite you to do that. And uh, our church council is going to come and we will partake uh, of the bread that represents His body and the wine and the grape juice that represents His blood that was shed for us. Council, would you come at this time? Let's ask God's blessing upon the bread that represents his body that was broken for us. If you are watching online and participating at home, we ask God's blessing applied to the elements you may be prepared to observe this with us as well. Lord God, thank you for the bread that's been prepared today. We thank you for the hands that do that. And Lord, we uh, just ask that representation of this bread as your body broken for us. Uh, we search our hearts even now, understand the price you paid for our salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. took the bread in front of the disciples and broke it. He said, this represents my body, 
which is broken for you by the feet in remembrance of him. Amen. In like manner, he took the cup. Our outer rings are grape juice. The inner rings are wine. God, thank you for representation of your sacrifice for us, the bread, the wine, the grape juice, your body and your blood. Help us, Lord, to count the cost that you gave for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. our prayer of thanksgiving in unison. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Council, thank you for your service today. Amen. All right, Laura. Just before we sing that last song, let's uh, let's get those birthday people. Okay? Is that okay? Um, all right. 
Uh, Ryan, was it? Uh, did, did Sarah have a birthday this past week or so? And did she in too? No? No, Pia? Middle okay, he's coming up. Okay. So we can. Jack got one too? Coming up? Oh, okay, okay. All right, well, we'll you want us to hit you early, Jack? It was last month. Okay. All right. All right. So, all right, we've got, we've got Joanne Harvitz got a birthday, and we've got uh, Sarah Flanagan's got, got a birthday. We'll leave it at that then, okay? And we'll just let the rest of uh, bygones be bygones, as they say. All right, go ahead, Laura, real quick before we do our last song. Help us to serve you together. To 
until you call each one of us home, however that may be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Walk with the king. Be of good cheer, Jesus said, O oh Lord. Come in the world. See you downstairs. Thank you.